Welcome to Let's Weld Something. I'm Bob Moffat, and today I get to introduce you to the man. Yeah. The, <laughs> one the man. of the godfathers here, how things started. Man, I haven't seen you since you kicked my butt in the golf course. That's the right. That's right. I don't yeah, like well, losing either, old buddy. Yeah, I'm telling uh, you, that was brutal. Yeah. Well, but it was also very fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah, very that was fun. our, that was that was our first introduction uh, in the golf course. Yeah. My partner was more interested in his music yeah. than playing golf, it seemed like. And, <clears throat> but that was a great time. All came down to the 18th hole, and I, I knew you when you were smiling over there, you were thinking to yourself, this guy doesn't know the right break on this putt. And I didn't. I was fooled. I was fooled. I was over at the John Deere. It was. Play. It was a very beautiful golf yeah. course. Yeah. How you been? Hey, I've been great. Uh, I... Uh, uh, enjoyed my experiences in my younger days, uh, you know, building uh, welding material sales, and uh, it's, it's six, 16 years uh, now. Uh, Legacy is carrying I, on. Yeah, I turned it over to my son, and he's done a great job with the business, and he has, has moved in uh, uh, other directions and kept up with the modernization of the it, whole facility. And, you, and yeah. you see things changing yeah. in ways that you didn't think were ever going to happen no, when you were, yeah. No, I mean, no, look at, no. it, look no. at you and I, you no. and I started, we're operating now the books and encyclopedias. Right. And look at it, you punch yeah. a button now and you got access yeah. to all yeah. the information and social yeah. media and everything's yeah. instantaneously I mean, around sell, the world. Selling door to door encyclopedias is a, yeah. a lost start today. Yeah. 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 But uh, no, we always enjoyed it. Uh, Brian uh, joined me, you yeah, know, right out of uh, college and uh, took hold of the business. Well, he should. And, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. so, that's what kind of what's supposed yeah, to happen yeah. in the uh, American. Yeah. You build a good company, yeah. your family's supposed yeah. to kind of follow along, support you. Yeah, I supported and, my dad's oil, oil, oil business. Yeah, I was going to go to the military, and and uh, he talked me out of it. He really did. Yeah, that's important. And he he worked his way, you know, right from the factory on in. I mean, he he learned the guts of the product. He learned he did it right. He learned how to operate. He learned uh, our spooling operation, which was a oh, guts. Oh, he spooled a few guys. Uh, yeah, he, he did. Yeah, and he knew the equipment and how it operated, and he knew how to repair it, and he uh, uh, made improvements to it. And, uh, I have a new respect for him, yeah, man. Yeah, if he spooled. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he, all of us, all of us spooled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we all. Well, that's because I saw that operation yeah, yesterday. Yeah, that was impressive, yeah, and how yeah, much, yeah. how much actually goes into it. Yeah, uh, but we all, but we all did it, and, and uh, we, uh, that was the focus of our operation years ago. Uh, it was. And I'm trying to think of exactly what the date was on that, but it was probably in the mid '80s, whenever the Italians brought in the uh, small MIG welder, uh, the 110 volt. Uh, oh when, yeah, uh, and were, we're we introducing the banjo spools and the yeah, smaller spools. Yeah, well, uh, they all incorporated one pond spools, and uh, basically in this country, nobody manufactured the one pond spools. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, we looked at as an opportunity to uh, put ourselves in a marketplace, supplying something that nobody was supplying. And and the overseas spools, to be honest with you, they were coming from Italy. Were not that great. I mean. They they were somewhat ragged uh, as far as the spooling it, itself. The spooling or as far itself, as, yeah. it, it just it didn't look real good. Uh, they they functioned, but we felt we could do better, and uh, we uh, devoted time and attention to building some spooling equipment that would do multiple spools at a time to sort of pick up the uh, slack uh, for the U.S. Uh, need as these small units kept coming in. Uh, the uh, the welding market as a whole, the welding distributor, uh, they did not take to these units at all. Okay, they, they no, they didn't. They, and I was in sales about yeah, that time, and, yeah. and I remember, you know, I tell people, hey, I, you know, if you buy that, I'm not going to be able to help you. Right. I'm not going to be able to supply your contact tips at a price that you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have to buy it at the same price as you, and I'm going to yeah. mark it up. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't take to it very well when I was in sales yeah. and, early on. And, and, and uh, they were distributed by the automotive aftermarket. Yep. They were distributed by the catalog market. Uh, the welding distributor didn't take to them, but they were selling so many of them that uh, these people needed an avenue to buy these small spools and supply them. And who, uh, who came along and did it? I mean, right off the bat, I immediately fell in love with this, and I sold a bunch of them. The Lincoln SP100. Remember yeah, that one? Yep. Yeah, the 110 yeah, volt machine yeah, had yeah, had a yeah. totally independent volt and amp. wasn't yeah. it wasn't a synergic. It wasn't anything like that. And I, I sold that to a lot of automotive people. And I had a customer yeah. that moved from Jersey down to Cushing, Oklahoma, and they built 
atrium exhaust stacks for hospitals and man this guy ran i don't know how many yeah. hundreds and thousands of pounds of 023 stainless yeah that's all and i sold so many of those machines i'd sell them 20 at a time yeah they had a big yeah, operation yeah. big yeah. operation yeah. and so, so that's when finally I mean, lincoln and miller realized that this was a wave of the future and the italian unit was coming in wasn't that great okay to begin with and they engineered, uh, like like you say, that Lincoln unit, and and brought them up to an industrial standard to where they were durable and usable. I and, tried to shut yeah. one down one yeah. night in a demo. I, I was teaching then at Pioneer Tech School that I graduated from, and I tried to shut one down. And I, I was welding on half-inch bevel plate. I did a root pass downhill. I did fill pass one, two, three, four, and I think I was doing part of the cap or the last fill pass. And it finally shut itself down on the thermal protection yeah. overload. It just popped the, yeah. you know, no, no harm. Yeah. But that was a lot. It was a 10-inch long plate. And I just kept yeah. pulling the trigger one after another, just yeah. kept going. Yeah. And I was working it hard just to see what it would do. I was yeah. trying to make it fail. And it took a while. That's what I'm saying. It yeah. was the, so that's appreciation. Yeah. And I had, you know, other people, my cousin down in South Texas bought a, the automotive aftermarket or whatever and I'm going he didn't know how to make it run he was he was in <laughs> jail with it and I said well I'll come I'm coming down to visit family anyway I'll, if you have the operating manual no I don't have anything he didn't have anything with this yeah. unit and he's out in the hill country of Texas so I went down and got this machine tuned up for him and yeah. it was screaming when I left I don't know but again you know you can't get parts for him where do you, yeah. where do you find little parts you got you got machines that are ten thousand dollars, and a little fifteen cent O ring will just shut you down. You're, yeah. you're not doing anything yeah. until you find one. That's that's what yeah. that's what's difficult. It's frustrating sometimes. So the information that we can use today, I mean, gee whiz, we're doing Zoom meetings halfway across the world, and they're immediate. It's like yeah. I'm like I'm in somebody's office in Germany right now. Yeah. You know, we didn't have that when no. when we started out, and no. But you're, you know what? Chemistry was still chemistry, wasn't it? Yeah, it's still the same. It never yeah. changed. Was, yeah. I think we were yeah, talking out in yeah. the shop here, and I was yeah, telling you, I've yeah. suffered my way through looking at the phase diagrams, and that's yeah. where you kind of built this business on, was the, the hard facing and phase diagrams. and Yeah, on, on because it was just products that, that you knew and, and could engineer and, and meet the particular applications for the customer and, uh, and, and sort of get to the customer's needs, because in the area of wear resistant and, and hard facing, uh, if the the person doing the job, they don't know what product to use on it, nor yeah. do they even say they know the product. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, we had what we called uh, you know, hard surfacing field engineers, and there weren't enough of us to go around, to be honest with you. Uh, so uh, we would work uh, with distributors in various applications, in the strip mining, uh, in uh, the... Uh, steel industry, uh, any place that uh, you he needed. That's heavy wear. Yeah, heavy yeah. wear, heavy, heavy wear. And um, even, uh, even believe it or not, you know, steel mill rolls, okay? Uh, I don't and, even want to know the forces yeah, that yeah, go and the yeah, heat and, yeah. and everything along yeah. with that. Yeah. So, we're, you know, I mean, that, that brings up the question, where do you, where do you bring in a chromium? Where do you bring in a yeah, vanadium? Yeah, where do you, where's right. the manganese yeah. fit in? You got all this chemistry yeah. going on, and where's where does it yeah. all fit and fly? Yeah. You know, yeah. how do you yeah. how do you make a product that will that you can put down on a surface that's going to not crack out, that's going to be absorbed or bonded into the parent metal, but yet be wear resistant and and useful as yeah. far as the, the industry and the application it's in. That's a yeah. you guys are out. You guys are out just like your your doctors. Yeah, nobody's it, talking. Yeah. Your, your your clients not saying anything over there. Your patients yeah. on the table. But how do you <laughs> how do you serve them? How yeah. do you save them? Uh, yeah, because you have various applications. You have you know low stress abrasion, high stress abrasion, moderate impact, high impact, and then you take into the operating part as to what's the heat requirements okay yeah and, that changes uh, everything that changes that, everything it changes all your needs so, ah. so there's a lot of areas to look at but uh the the neat thing is the metallurgists have over the years have really come up with some fine products and uh in uh, and how they put them together you know on, on abrasion applications uh the highest percent uses is what they call the chrome carbide products okay 
Chromium and carbide. Chromium we hear that carbide. a lot in the welding industry. Yeah, and that's one of the, on abrasion applications, uh, and people will chrome carbide. Well, the chrome carbide, when you get it in the welding electrode, okay, it's not chrome carbide. If you look at the analysis, you'll have a 30, 35% chrome, and you'll have a 5% carbon. And what happens when you strike that arc, uh, carbon has a high affinity to mix with other elements. Okay? And uh, as you know, for instance, with the uh, cast iron product, the reason why you need high nickel is because it traps the carbon, because the carbon in cast iron is where your problem is. Four, okay? and, four percent, and, yeah. is that and, something up there in that range? Yeah, and, and what happens is, that has a high affinity to the nickel and it isn't affected and the nickel still maintains its ductility. Ductility, and, yeah, There's, yeah, yeah. that's a key and, term right yeah. there. And with your chrome carbide, your chrome carbide is formed as you're welding. You have chromium in the, in the coated electrode and you have carbon. And when you strike that arc, if you took a so uh, micro, micro uh, picture of it, you would see all these chrome carbides throughout the whole deposit. Right. So, uh, so what was the chromium carbide? What was the product that the people put down with the the big torch, oxyacetylene yeah, torch, uh, and yeah, the yeah. tubes and uh, a lot of that is tungsten carbide. Okay, okay, okay. and that is created. The uh, tungsten carbide is manufactured, and what they're doing is they're oxyacetylene down and maintaining the tungsten carbide in the deposit. But it isn't tungsten and carbon in the material itself. It, the carbide itself is created and then it's put onto the product. I used to twist off 24 large acetylene every other yeah. Friday in a little bitty town in northern Oklahoma uh -huh. in a small room in the extreme heat. Yeah. Boy, I was nervous as I'll get out, but I'd go, in, <laughs> I'd go inside to get a signature and these guys are in there running these enormous tips. Yeah. There'd be like yeah. six of these guys in there. It just sounds like a jet engine going off inside this building. Yeah. And they're right downtown. I mean, they're they're in there yeah. doing their thing, yeah. putting the tungsten yeah. carbide down. Yeah. It's crazy. And even there was a product that uh, Studi manufactures called Horseshoe Tuborium, and it was I've a never tungsten. Heard of that one. It was a tungsten carbide that was used on uh, horseshoes for uh, uh, oh. for uh, uh, horses. Yeah, give wear resistance to uh, horseshoes. I remember calling on my dad, some of my dad's clients who used machinists in northern Oklahoma to rebuild oil field equipment and I'd yeah. call on them occasionally when yeah. I got into sales and yeah. of course I wasn't expecting to make a sales I was, I was really I went in there to learn something because I knew these guys knew you know yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fairview Oklahoma Blackwell Ponca er, Harmony yeah a little towns all scattered out all over a pretty big area really but uh, I was talk calling on one one day and he he walked over to the cabin and he goes now what are you selling again and I said uh, MG mess regression products and he opened the cabin and he's like Wow. He goes, well, if you don't work, I got something in here that does. It does. <laughs> and there's every name in there under the planet. It was impressive how he had yeah. it. He had powders, he had stick electrodes, he had, had all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah. I, I mean, I learned a lot. I was fortunate to get into sales. Let's, uh, if you were, this product is not identified. How much chrome's it got in it? Do we do a sniff test? How do we do this? How, uh, how do you identify something that, I mean, we're going to put a wear surface down on something fairly simple, how we how we go about it? Well, basically, uh, it's a hard-facing electrode, okay? And the data sheet is going to tell you, you know, basically the chemistry and the hardness value. <coughs> uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to weld it over a carbon steel plate, okay? And uh, your hardness values are going to vary between, and I think it's in the most uh, data sheets, okay, where you have uh, first layer, second, and third layer value. Mm -hmm. uh, your first layer value is going to be diluted by the carbon. So right. you're, they'll tell you that hardness, that electrode may be 52 Rockwell. Well, it's not 52 Rockwell on the first layer because of the dilution it's into the be carbon way steel. softer there. Yeah, it'd probably be about 30 Rockwell. And we don't, want to, we don't want to quench either. We don't want no, anything. No, there, there's no heat treating. It's an as deposited hardness. Okay. okay? Uh, and normally on hard facing applications, uh, you do multiple pass, and it's not single pass. Yeah. And there are some products that you can multi-pass and put five, six layers on it. There are other ones that, the because of the carbide formation within it, okay, if you go more than two or three passes, it will not have any impact which, resistance. Which ones do you want to put a like the buttering pass down? You want to put a buffer pass down before you put this product down. Which ones are those? Are those yeah, a you, particular you have, category of... 
you have several categories on that. Uh, you have a build-up electrode, okay? Uh, and uh, a lot of people call it uh, build-up, right? Okay? Uh, so if you have a wear area and you want to build it up prior to putting the uh, two to three pass hard facing on it, you take that build-up electrode, which is a, uh, a sort of a high, uh, a low alloy product, uh, something like a, a 120 or 110 yeah, uh, tensile product, and you wear, you put that down, build it up, and then you hard face over top of it. Uh, and if it's a manganese base, then you got to use a manganese base material or a stainless base to do your build up work. If it's a carbon base, then you use a standard build up electrode. Interesting. I think this is everybody's least favorite uh, in the application world, but I find it fascinating yeah. because of the the old time guys that did it and figure out how to do the patterns and they oh, were like yeah, artists. Right, exactly. They're like artists. I mean, they put yeah, their signature yeah, on, a, yeah. on a bucket or a blade or something yeah, and it's yeah. like, you know, everybody walks by and they go, yeah, wow, that yeah, is so cool. Yeah. But then the, if they have to sit down and do it, they're like yeah. bitching. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to yeah. take the time, the yeah. pride to figure it out. Yeah. It's, it's sort of a technique that they learn. And when you're, you're having a bucket and, and you're applying a pattern to it, what you're trying to do is the material that you're scooping up you're trying to get it to catch between that pattern. Pack it, pack it in that yeah, pattern. Because yeah, because it gives re resistance to the wear by you impacting that material within the pattern that they've drawn out. Uh, and it's, it's quite unique, and they take a lot of uh, pride in how they do it and, and, and what they do with it. I, I, you know, I guess he call me weird, but... Well, you call me weird anyway. I missed that putt in the 18th putt. No, <laughs> I, you know, I, I got to go and tear stuff up. I took classes in statics and strengths, and I got to do tensile pulls and compressions. And I mean, we tore a lot of crap up. Mm -hmm. But while we were tearing it up, we were recording values, how tough it was, how, you know, what's the strength factor of this and that. And then I look back on the suffering through the phase diagrams and all the equations and everything, and I had a new appreciation for it. Tensile pulls, uh, ductility, toughness, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it, you know, for a while, everybody was, like once a month, somebody was de developing a new flux core wire, and you had to go look at the values on it. Mm -hmm. What's tensile strength? What's the, what's the toughness on it? Yeah. You know, the Sharpies and all that kind of stuff. So yep. I looked at that. I, t I got to take classes on tearing crap up in physics classes, statics, and strengths, and it, and it helped me out a lot in the welding industry as far as the, the background knowledge of, how things work, you know, and what the electrodes are all about and the chemistry and whatnot. So let's go out in the lab and run okay. a couple of passes here and we'll Yeah. And we'll run uh, we'll run one and we'll do a file test. We'll run three more or something and over the top of it, let it cool and see what the file floats on it, see if we can feel it. And uh, this is a this is a basic card facing rod. Uh it uh is a uh, uh abrasion and moderate impact uh used in Probably uh, uh, kind of 50, all around 50, 60 percent of the hard-facing applications there you are go. this type of formula, this type of chemistry. Uh, unless you get into the, the exotics where you have special situations, this is just a general-purpose rod for hard-facing. Yeah, we can go out and run a few beads. Let's see do how it. She operates. Appreciate you. Let's okay. go out and do that. Okay. I'm interested. Thanks, Bob. Uh -huh. Thank Enjoyed you. the conversation. Absolutely. Okay. My, my honor. <laughs> I want to run a pass that's about time and a half the size of this right out here on the edge. Okay, that good. Work. That'd be great. Yep. And then that way we can get to it with a file. Yeah. We were talking inside earlier and uh, got, we're going to run some rods here, a couple of beads. But first we want to kind of take a, a test and the good old file was the best way to do it, right? It is, yes. I started this, I, I could get into it, but right out here on the edge, on edge with the file, start to make a cut. And that's just that's just soft. That's just yeah. Your carbon steel it's just plain base soft. I'm is getting soft. into it. I got a big yeah. notch cut yeah. in it. I can feel it. So yeah. Yeah. so if we if we put this down for just a general purpose hard face, we'll test it after the first bead. Yeah. Just to kind of look at it. But that's yeah. not what we're really after, is it? We no. want to put two or three beads right. down. Okay. Yeah, you'll have a relatively hard. But but it won't be the true effects of the uh, rod itself until you 
done two or three passes because of the dilution. So, I mean, if I was looking for technical specs, I'd go out and I'd look at the chemistry of this first. Right. I would, anyway. Yeah, you would, yeah. And then I'd look at yield strengths and whatnot. It's, yeah. it's listed. Everything, technical specs have to be listed. They're all listed. Okay. Yeah. I bought some silver solder one time and I was amazed that it was 78,000 tinsel. Yeah. yeah. Who, oh, God's crazy. I couldn't believe that when I saw it. 120 amps. That do you? I think it'll work. All right. Yeah. What's a few amps we'll amongst we'll we'll Am I going to be shaking? We'll I'll be try. over here shaking like I was getting ready to make that putt. <laughs> you keep laughing about it. The one it, you dude, missed. I noticed uh, it's just sizzling in there. Very soft arc, very, very appealing soft, arc, yeah, I should say. Yeah. Very appealing arc. Yeah. It's a very good operator. I'm not. I'm very not one to beat the crap out of my slag either, because I know yeah. it comes up and hits you in the lip or something, hits you in the yeah. eye. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Very, very uh, smooth operating. Uh, I guess. Easy slag removal. Uh, yeah. The density of that slag, the way it, the way it, uh, everything kind of came together, is a testament. So, what do we have here as far as a typical chemistry? A typical. What, what am I looking at here? I can already tell that's harder than it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're looking at uh, a chemistry is uh, probably around a uh, 13 chrome, uh, one and a half carbon. Uh, uh, it, it gets good impact resistance and uh, good uh, uh, wear resistance. Uh, one and a half carbon, that's up there. Yeah, yeah. You know? but the, uh, the carbon dilutes with the chrome and that's why it isn't detrimental to the, uh, you get no uh, stress relieving, cracking with it. It's a dense deposit. So we want to we want to feel this right now. I was, I'm curious. I want to yeah. know what this is all about, so I'm going to feel it right now with the file again. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have a hardness value to it. Yeah. I'm going to start out. Well, I've cut yeah, into yeah, it, yeah. but it is nowhere yeah. near, no, not nowhere not. near as easy as what I did over there. No, it's about nowhere 10, 10 times it. harder than it is as a basic carbon steel. Yeah. But then that's it, not where we're going, really. We need to go with more subsequent passes here. Yeah. One of which I want to run, I'll probably run right at the toe of the previous weld and I'll overlap this a little yes. bit. And then after that, we can go yes. on top of the Right. Go on top of the two passes there. I gotta do a restrike to finish that bead there. I don't even know how to describe how smooth this is. <coughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, usually when you run something that's got an alloy, right. you see things at the end of the rod, the arc, you've got the nickel, you got little BBs flying off. They're soft, mm -hmm. but they fly off of there. This one looks like it wants to do that, but it doesn't. No. And it just, it just, it's like a sparkle show, which then I think of high manganese. And I don't, you know, it's just one of those things I'm looking at. The operator appeal, this stuff runs super smooth. <laughs> Runs very smooth. Yeah, slag removal is easy. The Not bad. Shape. I mean, I've overheated this part. If it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't right. this bad, I, yeah. I know it'd yeah. be off of there already. Yeah. But, but, but. Look. I mean the. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Uh, yeah, look at there. I mean, I mean the bead is. is outstanding. Golly. Yeah. 
I don't even know how to describe how smooth that is. Yeah. And I can, it's hot. We do want to let it cool off, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get into it even hot. Just from the looks of it. But by putting on the second layer, you've maximized your uh, wear resistance and hardness on the outlet. By putting those two together right. and, and then putting the third one on top? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> you you positioned yourself almost in undiluted weld metal. I don't, I don't, this, this sheen that's coming off of here, this, I don't know yeah. how to, it's kind of like a, I'm scratching the surface and that's about it. It's yeah. not going to bite. I don't know if that, it's not, it's not a grain structure. It's just a sheen that's on there that looks like it's, I don't know, it reflects the chemistry. It reflects the chemistry. It okay. definitely does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Noticing what I'm seeing. Yeah. Very appealing product. I don't even know yeah. what the name of the product is. We're just, yeah. just talking about history, you know? Yeah. We're talking about the, how this thing started, right? Right. Exactly. Good stuff. Yeah. Amazing how everything's evolved from. Yeah from uh, an application out in heavy industry that yeah. you have to recognize. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I, you nice. know, I could, I'd work hard to get into that right now, I can tell. Yeah. And it's hot. I mean, are we doing this in wire as well? Is it only stick, stick uh, electrodes? No, it's available in wire too. Yeah. TIG? Yeah. Uh, no TIG. No. Uh, in a, uh, is that an open arc and gas wire? The wire, yeah. Yeah. The wire is a flux core. It's a yep. flux core. It's an open R core gas wire. And it comes in both uh, varieties. Interesting. Yeah. I can. I mean, I'm amazed at how things have. And I think in, uh, the, in the world of the, when yeah. it comes to the chemistry and the metallurgy and everything, yeah. I'm amazed at how things have happened yeah. over the years. And this is one of them here. I get yeah. to see it firsthand, so I'm I'm honored. Yeah. I'm truly honored to spend the time. Hey. I mean, the history and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been fun. <laughs> it has Thanks, been fun. Bob. Even though I've you learned a lot. It doesn't matter. I'll give you another shot at it. Yeah. I'd like to have that, you know. I'd like to have another shot. I don't want to go down. I don't want to go down. No, because it's going to live. Cut. You know, it's live in your memory forever. You knew that course, didn't you? Yeah. You knew that course, didn't you? Yeah. That putt was, I mean, Things were like this toward the clubhouse, big old bank like this, but the Mississippi River's right over here, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And you're sitting yeah. over there going, I don't think he knows the blood <laughs> toward the river. <laughs> I was close, but it didn't go in, man. Oh. That was a great time. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. That was. Well, that concludes right. that one. That was, a, that was a bit of history and a lot of fun for me. Uh, I just, I can't say enough about the time, the honor, spending time with this guy here. Thanks for watching Let's Weld Something. Please subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Throw some comments in there, what more you'd like to see, what we could produce, and, and uh, collaborative efforts. If you want to come on board and, and uh, climb in with me and do some stuff, teach me how to weld, come on. Thank you. <laughs>